All right, let's talk about how to choose the right preset. So in SU Podium, most of the difficult technical settings are pre-configured behind the scenes so that all you need to do is pick from a list of render presets in the options dialog. Now, this is different from some render engines that give you access to every single setting on a much more granular level, um, but we've configured Podium this way to simplify the render process and ensure that you'll be able to achieve good results without too much of a learning curve. Okay, so we make our preset selection from the drop-down right here at the top of the options dialog, and the preset we choose is chiefly responsible for three things in the render. We choose based on the scene type, so interior or exterior, and that's going to affect the brightness or exposure of the render. Render quality, uh, the presets are named according to their quality settings, default, high, fine, and QMC, and then render speed. The higher quality presets take longer to render. So if I go back to SketchUp, in this options dialog in the dropdown, these are all named according to the categories that I just introduced on the previous screen. Okay, so scene type is a pretty intuitive choice. Half of these presets are labeled interior, half of them are labeled exterior, and you simply choose based on whether or not your model is open to the environment. So with the Barcelona Pavilion model, the sky is exposed, and I would use an exterior preset in the kitchen or in an enclosed space, and so we would choose one of the interior presets. And the main difference between these is brightness. Uh, the closest thing in photography would be shutter speed. When you take a photo outside, the shutter is only open for a small fraction of a second because if it stayed open any longer, the image would be overexposed. Then when you take a photo inside, the shutter stays open a little bit longer because there's not as much light, so you need a little bit more time to achieve a proper exposure. It's really the same idea in Podium. The exterior presets are dimmer than the interior presets because they're meant to be used in outdoor scenes with a lot of natural light. If I use an exterior preset outside, the render exposes correctly. If I use an exterior preset indoors, so if I chose this exterior default and used it in this kitchen here, the image will turn out way too dark. And it's the same if I use an interior preset on the Barcelona Pavilion model, we're going to end up with an image that's way too bright um, because the exposure is set higher on those interior presets. All right, moving on. So the second major decision we have to make has to do with render quality, which by extension has an impact on render speed. These second and third bullet points are pretty intrinsically linked. Um, if you increase the render quality, you're going to increase the time that it takes to render. So there are four different quality settings in the preset list. Most of the time you're going to be choosing between the default and high presets. There's also these two categories at the end here, Fine AA, which stands for Fine Anti-Aliasing, and QMC, which stands for Quasi Monte Carlo. I'll cover these separately, but first I want to talk about default versus high. Okay, so I'm back in the kitchen scene, and as I mentioned, most of the time for a scene like this, we're going to be choosing between the interior default and the interior high presets. You could also use the interior bright variations if you needed more light. Now, default refers to default quality and high refers to high quality. So a typical workflow when working on an interior image like this would be to choose the interior default preset for all your test renders and probably bump the render size down to something like 640 by 480 or even the 1024 by 768. You just want to be efficient. We want test renders to be finished as quickly as possible. We don't want to be waiting 15 minutes between iterations. So if I set this to something like 640 by 480 and choose the interior default preset and then make a render, this is what I get. So it, this is a basic test image. It took two minutes and 45 seconds. And I'm on a laptop. Um, it's a newer laptop with a six core i7. So even on a mobile CPU, we're able to get a test render out in under three minutes, um, as long as we use a small resolution and stick to that default preset. Okay, so let's say I'm at the point where I'm happy with this design and I'm happy with the way the test renders are looking and I'm ready to create my final image. What I'm gonna do is come back into the options menu, switch from interior default to interior high, and then bump my resolution up to whatever I need. So maybe that's 1920 by 20, 1080, maybe that's even larger. Resolution has as much of an impact on render time as the presets do. So the larger this resolution gets, the longer it's gonna take, but 
typically for a final image, you're going to want to do at least HD resolution, um, 1920 by 1080. Okay, so what exactly do we gain when we switch from interior default to interior high? Well, the two most visible things are going to be lighting and edge quality. So we're going to get cleaner, smoother lighting and shadows, and we're going to get crisper, smoother, better looking edges. Uh, but let me bring an image up to show you what I mean. Okay, so here's the kitchen scene rendered with interior default, and it actually looks pretty good, but there are three shortcomings that I just want to point out. So over here in the corner, we can see that the shadows are just a little bit blotchy. And this is one thing that the high preset will help. We'll get a much smoother result, sort of like we see over here where there's more light, um, and we won't have these splotchy shadows. The other two things are anti-aliasing, which I've mentioned in the past, but you can see this jagged edge up in the corner here. And then also on this blurred reflection, it's pretty noisy. And these are all things that the high presets are gonna help with. Um, but overall, this image actually looks pretty good. And that's because this kitchen only uses natural light and Podium is, is very efficient at processing and rendering natural light from the physical sky simulation. It's when we start to use artificial lighting that the difference between the default and high presets becomes more pronounced. So I'm gonna switch views um, and show some comparison images with artificial lighting. Okay, so I'm back in SketchUp, close the options dialog, and I'm gonna switch to this scene called Default vs. High. It's just gonna swing the camera around, and the big difference is that whereas the kitchen had no artificial lighting, this scene actually has five artificial lights turned on. So we've got this lamp over here on the living room assembly, and then these five recessed lights on the ceiling are also turned on. The other thing that I've done for this example is turned off SketchUp shadows, and here in the styles shelf, I've selected the Podium Twilight style. So instead of having bright sunlight streaming in through these windows, we're gonna have a relatively dim sky and very little natural light coming in. Uh, and instead we're gonna rely entirely on these six artificial light fixtures. So what we've done is switched from a situation that's relatively simple and, and fast for Podium to calculate in the first image to something that's a lot more computationally difficult with all these artificial lights and very little natural light from the sun. Okay, so real quick, my render settings for this first example. I'm just using the viewport resolution. I'm using the interior bright default preset under the environment tab. I've got the background set to default, so we're gonna be using the twilight style as the background. And then I've got my intensity and exposure bumped up to about 85. Soft omni lights are turned on because I want nice soft shadows from all these artificial light fixtures. That takes a little bit longer, but it is worth it in my opinion. Click save, click render, and I'll bring the image up. Okay, here's the result, and this took 11 minutes and 53 seconds to finish on my laptop at viewport resolution. Um, and again, it's a pretty good image, but we start to see some problems right off the bat. So we still have this blurred reflection noise that I showed you in the first kitchen image, but that's relatively minor compared to what I'm seeing up here along the top of the image. So all along this line, we're getting incorrect light distribution. Um, and that's just because we're using the default preset. It doesn't have enough samples and light bounces to fully resolve these photons correctly. So it's just something that we live with when we're using the default preset. The idea is you use the default preset to get your image looking relatively good, and then you switch to the high preset to take it to a higher level of finish. Okay, so when I switch to the high render, most of these problems are gonna disappear. So. This blurred reflection looks quite a bit better. All those lighting splotches from before are gone. And overall, we just have a much cleaner, better looking image. Now we did increase the render time from about 12 minutes all the way up to an hour and four minutes, but to get a better looking finished render, that really is time well spent. Um, and as long as you plan your time wisely, that shouldn't be a problem. Remember, you can always set Podium to render while you're away from the computer or even overnight if needed. So if you've got a slower machine and a really complicated model, you can just set up a render right before you leave your computer, um, and when you get back to it in the morning, it'll be finished for you. All right, so that's interior default versus interior high for a scene that only contains artificial light. Um, now this, this next example is sort of a matter of opinion, but I just wanted to show you what this same scene would look like if I turned off all the lights and rendered it with the interior high preset using natural light only. So 
there's the image. Um, the reason I bring this up is because I do think Podium is at its best when you use as much natural light as possible. I realize this isn't always going to be possible. Sometimes you just need to make a render in a space that's not going to have any natural light. Um, but compared to the, the two previous images, this one is by far the most lively and also the cleanest. We've got realistic light distribution, there's no splotches anywhere to be seen, and overall this just feels like the most realistic looking image to me. So. That's my suggestion, it's kind of biased, um, but I do recommend if you're in a model where it's possible to use natural light, I would try and minimize your use of omni lights and spotlights as much as you can. I get it if you're an interior designer and you're, you need to show what the accent lighting is going to look like, by all means do that, but don't turn on more omni lights and spotlights than you need to for a specific render. Okay, let's talk about the QMC presets. So, without getting too technical, QMC, which stands for Quasi Monte Carlo, is what we call an unbiased preset. And in plain English, this means it's sort of a brute force rendering solution. QMC prioritizes accuracy over efficiency and will generally produce a very high quality result at the expense of longer render times. So, in many ways, it's comparable to the high preset. Um, the lighting quality that you get is going to be similar to what you would see with the high presets, and the speed is also quite comparable, although there are a lot of cases when the QMC preset is actually going to render slower than the high presets. So the purpose of the QMC is to give you an option to use when the high preset isn't giving you a result that you're happy with. Uh, the chief benefit of QMC is that being unbiased, it really shouldn't produce lighting blemishes or artifacts. Light should be evenly distributed and cleanly rendered. The chief downside is that it's relatively slow and can also be noisy at lower resolutions. So here's a comparison between the interior high and the interior QMC presets. And I won't say one is better than the other, they're really pretty comparable, but this is interior high, which is what we saw before, and this is the interior QMC. I like the way it looks, I think it has a nice smooth appearance, and I actually don't mind a little bit of grain in my renders, so if I zoom way in, we'll see this is still sort of noisy. Um, but that's going to bring me to one last point about QMC. I actually had to render this twice as large as the high image, which means it takes at least twice as long in this case. Um, when I rendered it at the same resolution as the interior high image, it was just too noisy to be usable. Um, so I doubled the render size, and I really do think it looks pretty good. So the choice between interior high and interior QMC may end up just coming down to personal preference for you, but if you run into situations where the interior high isn't giving you a result that you like, I would suggest trying QMC and see if it solves the issues for you. So that's all I'm really going to say about the QMC presets. In the next section, we're going to move on to Fine AA. Okay, the last preset category we need to talk about are the Fine AA presets. Now, Fine AA stands for Fine Anti-Aliasing. These presets have the same basic lighting quality as the default presets, but increase the samples devoted to anti-aliasing or edge resampling. Now, we discussed edge resampling briefly in the materials video, but to recap what that means, the purpose is to improve the appearance of edges in your render by applying a subtle smoothing at the end of the render process. This helps eliminate the jagged appearance that we sometimes see on long diagonal lines or fine repeated edge details. So the blinds are a good example. We have these fine edges that are super close together, and when we render with the default preset, they may not look quite as smooth or clean as we want them to. So models with a lot of fine edge detail or repeating edges can be a candidate for use of the fine AA preset. Kitchens are a great example because cabinets in particular are something that can really benefit from the increased anti-aliasing samples. So let's go ahead and first create a render using the interior default preset. I'm just gonna use viewport resolution make a render, and then I'll show you what we can improve by using the Fine AA. 
All right, so here's the render created with interior default, and I'm just gonna point out some of the lines and edges that I'm not 100% happy with. So we have this diagonal here, it sort of looks broken and jagged at the top of the door. Over here, same thing, that jaggedness. Um, these blinds, which I've pointed out previously. And then finally, there's some places that are more subtle, but still could be better. The edge of this table, is a little bit jagged and even stuff on the bottom of the door here. So if I jump back to SketchUp and change the preset from Interior Bright Default to Interior Bright Fine AA, click Save and create a new render, you're gonna see how much the edge quality improves on those edges that I pointed out in the previous screen. Okay, so that render finished, and I've still got the arrows up on screen here to point out the sections I wanted us to pay closer attention to. Now, right now we're looking at the interior default render, but I'm going to turn on the interior fine, and you'll see how much smoother those edges get. Okay, so on all those sections that the arrows are pointing to, we're getting a noticeable improvement in edge quality. We go from jagged, broken edges to smooth, crisp, clear edges. Let me zoom in, especially up here on this diagonal. This is the default edge, interior fine, the blinds, default, fine. Up here, this still could be a tiny bit better, but this was the default. You can see how it's broken. We're getting this stair-stepping effect and this is the Fine AA. So I think you get the idea. We're using the Fine AA preset to increase the edge quality in our render. Now, the speed of the Fine AA presets is usually somewhere between default and high. So the original default render took eight minutes and three seconds. When I switched to interior Fine AA, it actually increased all the way up to 22 minutes and six seconds. That's a substantial increase, but for a finished render, it's worth it. The only drawback to this is that while the Fine AA preset has the best edge quality, the overall lighting quality in the high presets is actually superior. So if you find yourself in a situation where you need the lighting quality of the high preset, but the edges just aren't looking quite good enough, there is an alternate approach to solving anti-aliasing problems. Okay, so the first alternative solution is actually something we've already talked about in the materials video. Remember. I can always go back into SketchUp, come into the Podium Materials palette, grab the eyedropper, color select any of these materials, and change the edge smoothing attribute. So if I change the, the smoothing attribute on this door from default to either high or ultra, that should increase the quality of those edges. And then I can do that same thing on any materials that I think are gonna give me problems. So remember the edge of the table was kinda jagged, this diagonal line on the ceiling, the blinds, Okay, so that's one way to take advantage of the increased lighting quality in the interior high preset, but still get a boost to your anti-aliasing on certain materials in your scene. Okay, so the second thing you can do to increase the quality of the anti-aliasing in your image is to simply increase the size of the render. Anti-aliasing is a resolution dependent operation, so making the image bigger can actually substantially improve the quality of the edges. I'm gonna flip back to Photoshop one more time and show a quick comparison. This was created at viewport resolution with the interior high preset. So you can see the lighting quality looks fantastic, but we're still getting these jagged edges. Now, I created a second render at 2400 by 1404. So that's about a 50% increase in render size. And simply by increasing the size of the image, these edges do get a lot smoother. So you can see how increasing the size of the image is one way to improve the edge quality. And now, if I wanted to use this image as a base, I could then go into SketchUp, color pick some of these materials that are still marginally jagged, and set the edge smoothing to either high or ultra. So I think that's gonna cover the Fine AA presets and anti-aliasing in general. I'm gonna wrap up this section of the video and then we're gonna move on to HDR presets.